Hey guys, men's dating coach Harry Wilmington here, founder of introvertdatingsuccess.com. And on today's show, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. I found an article online that talks about the 50 typical characteristics that make you a more feminine guy. So we're going to go over this list because I wanted to kind of see what things I agree with, what things I don't, and what you should take from this list as it pertains to how women view whether or not you are a masculine guy. If you're watching this at youtube.com slash Harry Wilmington, hit the like button, subscribe button, and the bell icon to be notified of new shows. So today I wanted to go over this article that tells guys the 50 character traits that if they're showing these things, makes them a more feminine guy. And it's by a female writer. Now, I wanted to read this to you guys and kind of go through it and see what I agree with or not, because you know, as a man, you get told a lot of things about what kind of man you should be, whether it's one that's acting a certain way to show masculinity versus femininity, what's toxic masculinity, what's more preferred. And especially when these messages are coming from women, it can be really hard to decipher, A, what they're actually wanting, and then B, of those things that they want, which ones will actually work. And so as I go through this list, I'm going to point out some of the ones that I think I agree with and why they work. And then the other ones that I don't agree with and why it doesn't work. And then also want to point out some that just shouldn't matter at all and point out why they're trying to make it a big deal, even though it should not be a big deal in the span of things. Ultimately, as a guy, however you are, the more confident you are in the kind of guy that you are, you're going to be able to attract women. That said, it is always good to get an idea of what women are looking at, even if it's not always congruent or always staying the same in terms of what they are saying that they want or need a guy to display and not display to be attracted to. Real quick, be sure to go to introvertdatingsuccess.com and check out my eBooks, audio books, video courses, and freebies, as well as clicking on the coaching tab to get a one-on-one -on -one session. And of course, if you like the message you hear in this show, you can click on the tip jar tab to send a donation to show your support for the show. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen here with you guys. So this is the article right here, Feminine Guys, 50 Typical Characteristics That Make You One. I won't read through the main first paragraph because it's really kind of pointless, but I will get to the meat of this thing. So here we go. Uh, 50 things that scream you're one of the feminine guys. If you are wondering if people see you as one of the feminine guys, these are 50 signs that might not always scream it, but subtly whisper to those around you that you aren't just okay with your feminine side, but instead you are trying to steal a woman's thunder. Being sensitive is way okay. Being too feminine is definitely not. So as we go through this, you're going to see how they determine what's more masculine and what's more feminine, okay? So let's go ahead and go through that. So the first one, you cry in front of people. Of course, when something tragic happens in life, or if you lose someone, we are okay with it. But if you cry when your sports team doesn't win at Hallmark commercials or just at really at will, that signals you're one of the feminine guys. So unfortunately, for you guys out there that are a bit more emotional, what this woman's saying is that if you're doing that too much, then you're coming across as feminine. Now, that is not a bad thing to show emotions because realistically, when things happen in life, that can be a way to get rid of the stress out of it is to be able to cry about it. And I get on some level why this woman is saying like, we don't want, they don't want their men crying all the time. That said, there's nothing wrong with crying in a movie. There's nothing wrong with crying. If you have allergies, there's nothing wrong with crying. If you, you know, your sports team doesn't, plenty of men cry that when their sports teams win after years of not having won a game or won a series and yet their women stay with them and don't judge them at all. So this is one that I can't really agree with all the way. Although I do get, you know, being able to monitor the extent of which you're being emotional and crying a lot, because realistically guy, as a man, you need to be able to kind of learn how to deal with the various parts of life that can be stressful. And if you're not a guy that's been able to do that, then you can become that guy that cries all the time, even at times when it shouldn't technically warn it, if you just had a bit more understanding. Number two, you hold grudges. Guys are supposed to punch it out and get it over. Uh, get over it. If you are someone who is holding grudges, either let go or keep them to yourself. Grudges are so female. Uh, sorry, dude, that's not true. If you had a guy that was, say, like hitting on your wife who's a longtime best friend of yours, chances are you'd probably hold that grudge for quite a long time. Now, that doesn't mean you can't like forgive a person and then just never talk to them again because you totally can. And that's a way to be able to say, hey, I don't have any ill will towards you, but I don't need you in my life anymore. That's different than holding a longstanding grudge. But I don't personally agree with this one because I, I think that if somebody's bringing harm to you or your family or doing something that's disrespectful and not trying to say sorry on their end of things, it's perfectly fine to hold that grudge. That, that does not make you any less uh, masculine. Continuing, you sit in the passenger seat. Girls like a guy who likes to take control. So I'll say this. There were times in my life when I did not have a car and the girl that I was dating had a car. And even in those instances 
when I'd be like, hey, it's my car, so I don't want you to drive it. These women would be like, oh, no, please, by all means, take the driver's seat and drive us. Why? Because women like being led around. As much as they say, you know, they want they want a 21st century guy that doesn't care if the woman leads and yada, yada, yada. The fact is that instinctual subconscious part of them is still saying, I need this guy to prove that he's a leader and that he's going to be a man's man. And that means you taking the driver's seat, both figuratively and literally in the relationship. All right. So to this one, I got to agree. Next one, you take selfies. Selfies are way, way feminine enough said. It depends on the angle. So, and uh, realistically, you know, if you're with your girlfriend and you're taking pictures, your arms are probably going to be longer than hers. You're probably going to be the one to reach out and take that selfie with you and your girl. And then if you have like a Instagram or Facebook and you're solo and you want pictures to go up, you're going to take selfies at time. But here's the thing. Women are not going to judge that as harshly as you expect. Again, depending on the angle. If you're taking angles that are more traditionally female angles with pictures. So like going to the side or having your chin looking a certain way or whatever, then those could be judged. So I'd recommend going online and really studying up on what angles look more masculine when taking selfies. Yes, there are actual articles on Google. You can look up to find that so you will not get judged by women that see your pictures. Uh, number five, you live and die by social media likes. I agree. As a guy, you should not care about if people like you or not. You, you are busy focusing on your purpose and doing the things you need to do to take care of home and your family to care about if somebody likes your pictures on Instagram or Facebook. Okay. The only caveat to that is if you're like a social media influencer, then that's a thing where, because you're marketing yourself, it might be beneficial. But if you're just in your everyday life, just taking pictures or whatever, don't care so much about whether or not people are going to actually judge you on like what you look like in the pictures. All right. You care about your hair more than girls do. If a guy, guy cares more about his hair than girls do, and it prevents him from being adventurous or outdoorsy, that is way too feminine for our taste. So notice what she's saying here is that it's not necessarily all about the fact that the hair part bugs him. It's about the fact that if you care so much that you're not able to do these various masculine activities like outdoor activities, zip lining, walking through uh, hiking or whatever, then they're going to judge you because they want to be able to see that you are being a masculine guy. And caring about your hair so much is the thing that could turn them off. Now, again, that's not to say you don't shampoo it, you know, wash it, you don't have a style that you like. And realistically, women are also visual at times, not as much as us necessarily, but when they first see you, they are looking at your hair, how it's positioned, how it's cut, and don't think that a fresh cut won't turn a woman on, okay? But that she's what, what she's trying to say here is don't obsess over it. When you start becoming obsessive with your hair, that's when you start looking more feminine to them and it turns them off. Continuing on, uh, he, she says, you have more girlfriends than guy friends. If you look around, your best friend is, uh, list is all about hair, makeup, and emojis. You might want to check yourself. This one's kind of iffy. I know a lot of guys out there that are watching this probably have a lot of women that are friends. Admittedly, you've been probably trying to get with those women and it didn't work out and you got stuck in the friend zone, in which case you need to drop them all together. Um, so this one could be... It's, it's, I'm, it's, I'm neutral in this one because some guys have a lot of women friends just by default of how they grew up, or maybe they had a lot of women in their family that became family friends and now they're friends with them. And then other guys just have a list of girls they were trying to get with that ended up friends. So you have to determine what that is for you and then see if that's something that could be possibly affecting how these other women are viewing you that may possibly want to date you. Number eight, you wear shorts that go above your knees. I agree. Number nine, you take longer to get ready than a girl. Having to wait for a guy is irritating enough. If we are doing it because he, if we are doing it because he cares more about what he looks like than we do, it is a huge turnoff. So understand, guy, women expect you to be prepared and to already kind of know what your look looks like and how you're going to present yourself to the world. They're the ones that are going to be more indecisive about what they wear is going to be determined by how they feel about themselves that day and where they're going and what they have to match with. And that really is a kind of feminine energy. So make it a point to already have the, an idea of the kind of outfits you want to wear, the kind of smells you want to have, how you want your hair styled. So that way you're not the one holding you guys up when you're about to go someplace, because that really is more of a feminine trait. Continuing on, you skip. Again, enough said. And even if you know how, keep it to yourself. I'll say it like this. If you're out in public by yourself, skip to your heart's content. I've dated women who I'll skip in front of them because I don't give a crap. And a lot of this comes with your attitude. If you do things whereby you do it and you're doing it as if to say, I don't care how you judge me about this. I'm going to do it anyway. You can get away with doing a lot of these activities. That doesn't mean you should, but it means you can't. So I've definitely skipped in front of women before. Got no commentary on it. They didn't dump me afterwards it wasn't necessarily a problem. That doesn't mean they weren't necessarily holding it to themselves, but I'm saying I haven't personally had it be an issue. But again, that's one of those things. I'm, I'm really neutral on it, so you got to determine for yourself. Continuing, uh, you cross your legs. I get it, crossing your legs just feels good sometimes, but if you are a perpetual leg crosser, you should probably Google the origins of crossing your legs and quit it. I, I got to agree. 
Uh, so you use emojis. I tell you guys this all the time. Texting kills attraction. And one of the big things that you are doing to kill attraction is using emojis with hearts and smiley faces and winky things. These are all little cute things. And women are the ones that do cute. Men, you do not do cute. If you're going to send a winky face, send a semicolon and a parentheses in. Do not send the actual animated picture emoji because women are going to judge you for that. Continuing, you wear pink and aren't tough. <laughs> Only tough guys can wear pink. If you don't have a six pack, leave the Pepto colored shirt for the muscle heads. I got to be honest, a lot of guys these days are being able to wear pink and pull it off. So, and a lot of women seem to like it. So I can't say this is a complete truth because I've seen bigger guys wear pink. I've seen guys that aren't necessarily the most muscular wear pink and women are still flock to them. So if you have the right body type and think you can pull off pink confidently, then this would be one that is absolutely wrong. Uh, continuing, number 14, you eat neatly. Guys should eat like a hunter and gatherer, not like they are having tea with the queen. If your plate is neater than anyone else and you put way too much emphasis on how to roll your spaghetti, you need to learn to roll with it. Well, unfortunately, guy, a guy with manners is going to be able to attract women a lot better because she's going to be thinking in terms of future speak. What if I wanted to bring him around my friends? What if I want to bring around my family? If we have kids, how do I want them to learn how to eat? Is this guy going to be an example of how to eat properly? And so, no, you cannot get away with eating messily, despite what this woman is trying to say. And the fact that they even say like, oh, you got to eat like a hunter and gatherer. So you're going to go to the plate at any dinner you go to, any restaurant in public, or when you're with her friends and whatnot, and just eat nah, 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 with your hands and, and looking all sloppy and having mess all in your mouth. Like, no, that's stupid. That is not a thing. So do not listen to this one, guys. All right. Number 15, you decorate. One poster or record album sparsely placed is okay. If you are feng shui, then you might want to take a good look around. It screams feminine. All right, guys. So this is not to say that there's not a level of truth in terms of like, you don't have to be a full out designer to your place. Okay. But with that said, I have had male friends of mine who have found ways to decorate their places that are so interesting that it gives him an excuse to invite the woman into that space to be impressed by the stuff that he's used to decorate and then inevitably end up betting them. I had a friend uh, a few years ago, like almost like eight or nine years ago who we lived with and he had a room and he had like a nice little rug up that was hanging on his wall that he got from I think it was like South America or something like that. And he just had all these little artifacts that were around and it was so nice. So when we'd have girls come over, they'd be like, oh, we want to see your room. And he'd take them to the room and do stuff. And he got them that way because of the decorations and all the women loved the way that he decorated his room. So you do need to look up styles of decoration because there's masculine ways and more feminine ways to decorate your space. And if you're able to decorate in a way that is lively, but yet still masculine, then women will actually prefer that and reward you as a result. So this is not a complete... Don't listen to, but it is one of those things of be mindful of how you're decorating your place. Don't just be like, I'm not going to decorate at all because blank walls are not sexy. I mean, even my place right here, it's a, it's a short space, but I got some pictures that I painted from various paint nights that women typically tend to be impressed by. I got the little things over here that have the, I don't know what, if it's Japanese or Chinese, so please forgive me, but it's got these very symbols with uh, prosperity, love, tranquility behind it. And women are always say, oh my God, that's so fascinating. Where'd you get it from? So decorating can actually attract women. Continuing on, say, uh, if you do dishes, if you do your dishes, Johnny on the spot, guys are supposed to have a sink full of dishes waiting for women to come rescue. So what is this saying right here? What is this woman literally saying? She's saying that you need to have a messy place and a messy kitchen because uh, instinctually as a woman, it's my job to clean. But how many women do you hear these days say, well, I'm, I don't think we should follow gender roles and I shouldn't have to cook or clean a place. And yet this woman is saying to you right in this article that despite how annoyed they might be by it, they actually want to do that. Why? Because it defines roles. It allows her to say, oh, he's the messy one. Oh, I guess I got to come and do my part. And women want to feel like there's a part for them in your world. Now, that said, I do not completely agree with this because women also don't like smelly places. And if you have just a pile of dishes stacking up, it can start to make your place smell bad. So you're fighting two battles here. Ultimately, I err on the side of I try to keep my sink as clean as possible. But that said... Also, if there's like a dish or two in there, like I don't feel like it has to be 100% clean. I can keep it like 85% and just have a few dishes in there here and there. And I have yet to have a woman come over to my place and start trying to just wash my dishes for me. So keep your place clean for yourself and just don't even listen to this one altogether. Okay. Just like take this one off your list because it is not important. Keep your place clean. And if you keep your kitchen clean, assume she can come over and do other stuff that she wouldn't have been able to do at that time if she had to clean your dishes instead. All right. Continuing on, number 17, 
Your outfit matches accessories and all. If your shoes match your shirt, belt, watch, ascot, and you even know what an ascot is, then it is time to examine your feminine side. Guys, that is bull crap, all right? Women like men who know how to dress. They're not trying to go out there with somebody that looks like a bum. So ignore this one. Get your outfit right. Know what fits you. Know what suits you. Know what looks good on your body. Figure that stuff out so you can go out into the world and have women coming to you. There's a reason that in the in the red pill community, there's a thing called peacocking, where the guy that's dressed nice and looks like he's about something, women automatically flock to. Because by the way you dress, they assess what kind of guy you are and if you're worth their time. Continuing on. Uh, he says, you wear animal prints, never cool, camouflage, okay, animal prints, so not. I, I don't know. I guess it depends on the animal print that you have, so I'm staying neutral on this one. Number 19, you drink cocktails with umbrellas. Fru-fru drinks have feminine written all over it. Guys, I'll be honest. I'm not a hard liquor drinker. I'm not a beer drinker. I like tequila sunrises. I like blue moons. I like anything with colors in it. Sometimes with an umbrella, I gives a crap not. But again, I get away with it because I say, this is how I am. This is what I like. And I'm not going to let anybody deter me from wanting this kind of drink. Like me ordering that kind of drink has not deterred women from wanting to date me. So you drink what you like. If you're not a hard liquor guy, because I understand it, I like flavors. And sometimes those drinks don't have flavors. If you're the same way, don't feel bad about it. But that said, if you're not, if you're going to do it, you got to do it with all the confidence in the world. You can't be like, well, I think I want to get like a, a tequila sunrise because now your delivery of what you're ordering looks frou-frou and therefore your drinks are going to also look frou-frou and then you're going to look frou-frou as a result, all right? So if you're going to order those kind of drinks, be bold and confident. You get your butt hurt when someone teases you. Guys are not supposed to take things personally. If you call him a name, he is supposed to shoot right back. If you get your feelings bruised at everything that is said, that is more girl than guy behavior. There's a level of this that is true, but that said, I'm not a fan of getting disrespected. I'm not a fan of having people in my circle make fun of me. When I was in sixth grade, I got bullied a lot. So that's not something that gels with me. So when I date women who try to jokingly insult me, one, I tell them to stop that crap is unnecessary. But two, I take those kind of things, that, that level of sarcasm as hidden resentment. Like when a woman comes to you and starts trying to do these little jabs and you know do these little sarcastic things, usually it's because they actually have an issue that is bothering them, but they don't know how to say it to you in a more direct way. So they try to jokingly say it. So when somebody's teasing me, my first thought is like, what's really going on? Just tell me the thing because I don't really like that kind of thing. Now, that's not to say you can't be playful with the person. And there's ways to be playful uh, and joke with the person without being insulting to them. But to say that you're not a man if you're not able to take insults, like I know there's a level of that where you should be able to kind of brush some stuff off and not make it a big deal. But if somebody's relentlessly throwing insults at you, it's perfectly fine to be butthurt about it. All right. Continuing, number 21, you're overly sensitive about everything. Toughen up and take it like a man. See, I hate this phrase. This phrase, take it like a man, because if we say anything to them like, you know, well, you know, be more like, be more of a woman, then they get all insulted. Well, I'm a woman's whatever I want to be, and I'm I'm a woman right now, and how dare you, this is that. So don't get fooled by this whole crap women saying, take it like a man or be a man or whatever. Um, but that said, you have to learn as a guy to not let so many things bug you. This is why I tell you guys constantly that being indifferent to things is going to be the biggest thing you can do in order to better your dating life. Because when you don't put so much emphasis on the way things have to be and just kind of go with the flow of things, then you'll be less sensitive by default. So it's not bad to be sensitive to things, but you do want to be mindful that being too sensitive, being overly sensitive to a lot of things can turn women off and also your friends off too, right? Continuing, number 22, you wear a sweater vest and V-necks. Occasionally, maybe, but all the time, not too hot. Uh, guys, I'm from the East Coast where it gets cold a lot during the wintertime. You're wearing vest. You might wear a V-neck. This one does not count. Continuing, you are too affectionate with your mother, not just a mama's boy. If you cling to your mother, hold her hand, or even refer to her as mother, as if she is the mother of all mothers, that isn't very manly. I, I got to say, that's true, guys. Get off the teat. All right. She's your mom. You love her, but don't be under her wing at the age of 40. still trying to be like, well, mommy, but mother like that really does not look good to women. All right. Continuing. You have a man purse. It's a satchel. No, it isn't. It's, no, it isn't a fanny pack or a satchel or a man bag. It's a purse, period. And I've, I've done a, I've talked about this in a video before about like the whole not just having your own purse, but also holding a woman's purse. Sometimes women will test you out by saying, hey, hold my purse for me just to see if you'll do it. But if you do it, you're going to look feminine to them and they might actually start to be turned off. So be mindful of this, that this is the thing that women are looking at to see, are you kind of, are you holding something that, look, that looks even remotely that it could parallel a purse? If you are, you're out. Continuing, 
you wax your eyebrows. Um, really, do I need to explain this one? Um, guys, this is this. It depends on your eyebrow situation. If you got a unibrow through here, then you might want to consider getting that, you know, moved out a little bit, whether it's lasering or waxing, or whatever. But yeah, telling a girl, hey, I'm gonna go to the salon to get my my uh, eyebrows waxed really is the definition of like being feminine. So you may want to avoid that if you've been up to this point. Or if you are doing it, just don't tell them you're gonna do it. Just make them think that your eyebrows always look nice, and you ain't gotta you know, say to the public at large that you like to get your eyebrows tweezed, all right? Continuing, you notice when someone has an awesome purse. If you notice that a girl has a really cool purse and admire it silently, then you're probably one of the feminine guys. Yeah, judging, if you're, especially if you're with a woman, judging anything else on another woman, unless she points it out to you, is a no-no. Even when she does point it out to you, like, don't overextend the amount of words you use to agree with her. So she says like, oh, what do you think of a woman's purse? You can just say, oh, nice color. That's it. So I got to say, you ain't got to add more to it. You ain't got to be like, well, I like the design and that designer is blah, blah, blah. And this person's from, you know, 1975. And yet, like, you do all that, you're going to look like you have fem feminine energy and it's not going to be a pleasant situation. Continuing, 28, you will only buy name brands. It doesn't show everyone that you have money. It says that you have been reading the latest fashion magazine, which is so not masculine. Okay, that's not true because how many of you guys out there know Nike brands or Air Jordan brands or Yeezys or, you know, any kind of various shirt and sports brand. Like there are men items that have brands, whether it's shaving creams, razors, types of cars. So don't buy into this myth that because you know of a name brand and you know what the quality behind that brand means that you're suddenly feminine. It just, again, depends on the thing that you're talking about. Number 29, you know, name brands. Again, why do they keep... See, this is the problem out there is that women will say things that in the moment, like when they're writing these kind of articles, when they're trying to find things to say, like, oh, about if they know name brands and they don't really think about the depth of what that actually means, because this is not a thing. Like, you knowing name brands of the clothes you like, the shoes you like, the cars you like, the, the computers you like, none of that stuff screams feminine. So that what they should have done is nuance this and said it depends on the name brand you're talking about. If you know more about female purses and you know more about perfumes and stuff, then yeah, I can see them going that way. But there's a lot of things out there that are masculine leaning that it behooves you to know the name brand. Just like I want you to know Introvert Dating Success as a brand because I want you to know that I give the best dating advice. If you didn't know that brand name, then I'm doing a horrible job and you're not going to be able to keep up with the ways to learn dating. Number 30, you are a wine connoisseur. It is okay if you are really serious about wine and over 50, but if you are a whiner, then it isn't very manly, just pretentious. It makes you one of the feminine guys. Okay, so what if you're a guy that grows up with a family that has a winery? Are you now a snob because you grew up around wine and then by default, you happen to know the name of wines? Is it a bad thing that you can go to a restaurant and actually know the right kind of wine to order based upon the meal that's being, being served with it? It is not. And most women actually appreciate that. So this is bullcrap. Number 31, you cry at chick flicks. The fact that you even go is questionable, but crying, not allowed. All right. So how many women have complained about this though? They want you to go see The Notebook. They want you to go see some romantic comedy. And you're like, oh, I don't want to go to that. That's too female, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. So now she's going alone. And she's going to come home and be mad at you for not doing an activity that she wanted to do after she's done all these activities that you wanted to do. Oh, but now this article is saying you're going to get judged for it. Bull crap. The reality is when a woman likes you and she wants to spend time with you, she wants to be able to take you to some of her interests. This does not mean that you cannot enjoy them. Now, that said... If you choose to cry at some of these movies, that is something that could be judged by women. But that does not mean that if you're not feeling a scene that is emotional and something is happening that's actually touching to you, that you cannot cry. You just don't make a big deal about it. You can have a little tear shed or be like, you know, whatever. You ain't got to go like, oh, my God. Ah. But I, I have plenty of guy friends that have cried at movies for various reasons. And that is not a thing that has turned women off. OK, so if you feel the need to cry at a few of these movies, don't feel bad about it. Not that I'm saying you should forcefully try to do it and make it a habit, but if it happens, don't think that now your relationship's over because she saw you cry. Number 32, you have a man bun. Don't care if it is in, buns are for women only. Sorry, I've seen a lot of white dudes out there that are surfers that have like the, the long flowing hair and when they go to certain places, they bun it up and those dudes got muscles and they wear tank shirts and women flock to them, okay? So again, when you're trying to do these kind of things, it's really what confidence level do you have behind it? The more confident you are, the more you can pull it off and the more women are not going to care that you're doing this particular thing. Number 33, you read like not the Drudge Report, but novels and crap. Can't keep up with the latest Daniel Steele book? Think about it. Um, 
sure, okay, yeah, don't read novels, don't read imagination stuff, don't read any of the things that they taught us how to read when we we're going through school. Now all of a sudden you get older, now you can't read those anymore because now you're not masculine. Got it. Don't listen to that one, guys. Number 34, you have a subscription to a magazine and it's not Maxim. If you read people, us, or anything in between, then you are way too worried about the world, which is all female. I got news for you. I'm in Hollywood. In order to keep up with the entertainment industry and things that are going on, those are the magazines that you need to be going to. Now, that does not mean, like she said, you don't have to have a subscription to it. You can if you want to. It's it's your prerogative. But most doctor's offices have them. Most, you know, various hospitals have them. Don't think that you got to fall for this whole thing of like, oh, I can't have the, the subscriptions to magazines that I want and look a certain way. All right. If you feel some kind of way about it, you can hide them in your closet or whatever. But Again, these are not even magazines that are like feminine leaning. They're all magazines about, you know, the latest thing going on in Hollywood and, you know, what actor is doing what. And who's like, like none of those things are things that will be indicative of being female. Number 35, you want to have the relationship talk even before she does. We want you sensitive, but not clingy. Don't jump the gun. It isn't masculine. And again, makes you one of the feminine guys. Now, this is the one that I tell you guys all the time. What do I tell you? I say on average, it takes a woman two to three months to solidify her feelings for you. And that when she is ready for that relationship to go forward, she will come to you and ask those questions. Until that time, you do not do anything other than ask her out, have fun, and hook up with her. Because what happens when you come to her is now you're saying, basically, the feeling she gets is you're saying, please, oh, please, princess, I've been having a good time with you, and I really want you to be mine, and I'm nervous that you're not going to pick me, so please pick me now. That's not what you're saying, but that's how she's interpreting it, especially if she's not ready for that step yet. So that's why you just wait. You just wait. You do what the things you're supposed to do. And then when she's ready, she'll come to you. So this is one I actually fully agree with, and I teach you guys all the freaking time. Number 36, you wear a visor. Uh, no, just next. You wear super skinny jeans. I agree. Number 38, you have a toy dog and you carry it around your purse. Okay, I agree. You own moisturizer and not for the reason you think. If your skin is softer than a baby's behind, then you should really think about the signals you are sending because you are one of the feminine guys. Guys, don't fall for that crap, okay? it's these. This isn't the days where a lot of guys have like those construction jobs, those jobs where they're working in a coal mine or working hours on end doing like lifting and grabbing things. Most jobs these days are like office jobs or like at-home jobs. So your skin's not going to be possibly as rugged as like your grandparents of yesteryear, all right? And so to that end, like I have very soft hands because I, I mostly type all day or I'm working on stuff on the camera all day. None of this stuff requires me to have rugged hands. So to say that, if you have moisturized hands that you're being feminine, don't buy that, okay? It doesn't look good to anybody to have ashy, chapped knuckles and knees, all right? Number 40, you love watching cat videos or just cats in general. Some of them are funny. I, I, guess, if you, if, I guess if you're watching a, a large amount of cat videos, that could be one thing. If somebody sends you a cat video and you watch it and say, oh, that's cute, and then you go on your business, I don't think you should be judged for that, but that, that's just stupid. 41, you have super neat cursive writing and use it frequently on thank you cards and just a check-in cards. So this woman is now saying that you're going to be judged by how well you write because you should write sloppy and nobody should be able to read your writing. That's bull crap. Okay. So that is bull crap. Don't listen to that one at all, guys. Hey, if you went to a, a decent school where they taught you how to write cursive the proper way and you're able to do it now, be thankful people can read your stuff. If you're signing checks that are making you know thousands of dollars, she's not going to mind how your writing looks for sure. I guarantee you that. Number 42, you wear gardening gloves to plant flowers. Men are supposed to get their hands dirty. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that there are bugs in the ground. There are worms. There are uh, various thorns that I might not know about. I might be handling a certain kind of plant that might not allow me to be able to wear gloves to be safe. So that's more of a safety thing. Don't fall for that being a more feminine thing, guys. Like, Just don't listen to that one. Number 43, you love malls. Can't get enough of the mall. Bad news for your masculine side. Okay, great. But what about during the holidays? What about during Halloween? People are going to go costume shopping. What about, you know, during birthdays when you're going to go there to be able to eat in a food court and then go find a gift and then go to some other stores to do some other errands? Now, this isn't to say you have to have an outright love for the mall, but realistically, a mall is a practical place to go to do a lot of shopping. I can go right now to the mall down here uh, in California and go to a Best Buy to get some wires from a phone. I can get a press from the food court. I can go get a gift from my mom for Mother's Day. I can do a plethora of things at the mall. So yeah, the mall is a great place. And I can, if I want to walk, let's say it's raining outside, I can go to the mall and get my walk on, get my steps in for the day. So this is one of those things where it's kind of iffy because I don't think you should necessarily go to a girl and say, oh my God, my favorite place in the whole world is the mall. But to act like you'd never go to one, that's stupid to me.
Number 44, you plant flowers to add a pop of color. If you are all about making your home curbside appeal awesome, that may be too much for coolness. Well, what if you're a real estate investor and you realize that adding plants to the decorum of your yard before you try to sell it could result in you getting you know, $4,000, $5,000 more on the sale of your house? You see, these are the things that women aren't thinking about. So they're not thinking about the fact that some of these things are being judged as feminine that could actually be angled to fit in a masculine state of mind. So you got to be mindful that when you go through this list of they're saying this is feminine, but could I actually see a way that men could do this in a way that they not they would not be judged as being too feminine? Number 46, you watch HGTV not to find out how to square a wall, but to find out what colors are in for the fall. I mean, the fact that you're watching HGTV, like again, there's nothing wrong with being a gardener or you know, knowing how to plant stuff or whatnot and going to the source for that. But I could see how women would possibly judge that, given that their general market is typically female. Number 47, you've never owned an action figure or a plastic gun in your life. Two things are essential for guys growing up. Even if it was your parents' fault, don't let anyone know. So what this woman's trying to say is if you've never held on to any kind of gun, be it real or fake, and you've never played with a toy that was masculine in some way, that you're not a masculine guy. I just can't agree with that. And I don't I don't believe that a woman who's going to be 20 years old is going to be like, hey, so before we, you know, I decided to date you, what kind of toys did you play with as a kid? What? You didn't play with any toys? Well, I'm not going to date you. Like, that's not a thing, guys. It's not a thing. Some, some people grew up in poor environments where they weren't able to have action figures or their mom could not afford a gun. Maybe they're out doing other things instead besides having toys. Maybe they were using their imagination. But the point is, this is not a thing that women are going to judge you on, guys. So don't even listen to that one. Number 48. You never leave the house without sunscreen. I get it, skin cancer, but guys are supposed to live on the edge. And if that's ignorant, we're going to pass by that one. That's that's not a thing, guys. If it's hot out where you're at, you and you know, even like me, because you know, me being black, people will say, "Oh, you're black. You don't have to wear sunscreen." Well, we burn up easily and also have a decent number for uh, skin cancer because we think that very thing. So it's not a bad thing to carry sunscreen, guys. Like, don't listen to that. Number forty nine. You fold your laundry with corners and edges. It isn't that we don't want our guys to be neat or to do their own laundry. It is just that we don't want them to spend so much time on activities that are primarily female. So again, this goes back to what? I remember earlier I said about the cooking part. Now she's saying, hey, we want to be the ones to do the laundry. We want to be the ones to do that kind of work that is typically more female. So those women out there that are saying, well, I think men and women should be able to do the chores equally. Understand this is an example of something that women are saying that they think they want but that they're at the same time judging you for when you actually do it. And that's not to say, again, that you can't be a guy that folds his own laundry. I'm, I live here solo, so I do my own laundry. I'm perfectly fine with that. But recognize that some women will judge you for this. And this goes back to you have to be confident in some of these activities. So if they do judge you, you don't give a crap and they will judge you less. But this is saying that they actually want to do that stuff, even if a lot of women today are feeling bad for wanting to do some of these things and won't say it out loud. And then number 50, your workout outfit is prettier than your girlfriend's. When a guy works out, he's supposed to wear his ripped Z Led Zeppelin t-shirt, not his fancy performance wear. Look like a guy when you are working on those biceps, please. So what is this telling you? That even women are going to be looking at you and your appearance and judging you and determining if it is masculine in their eyes or not. And most women, you know, they were earlier said about, you know, a guy that, had, that does his hair and looks prettier than hers that spends more time on it. Women are judging these things because they're saying these are feminine things. And we want to be the one of the, of the two of us that's going to be more feminine because we want you to care about us as if we are female. We don't need you being a female and then replacing us with yourself. So I get this one because I don't want to see a woman dressed masculine at the gym. I don't want to see a woman get in there and she's wearing like all sweats, lo lo long sleeve and, and long pants and, you know, not showing off any kind of curves to indicate that she has some kind of womanly figure from going to hit her at the gym. Like I completely get this one. All right. So as you can see, there were a lot of things on this list that I actually agree with in terms of the things that can make you look more feminine. But there's so many things on here that for better, or for worse, either aren't things or if depending on how they're done, could actually be done in a masculine frame light versus what they're saying, which is just all feminine. And this is the problem with these kind of articles that you as a guy coming into the dating realm and trying to learn how to be a better dater, you're going to see articles by this light women. And you're going to look at it and say, oh, she's a woman. She must know what she's talking about. So I'm going to do none of these things. But in the process, you could actually be getting rid of some of the things that women would actually like about you and would not judge you for that are part of your personality. And so that's why it behooves you to really understand the sources that you're going to when you're trying to learn how to date. Now, I have a website 
introvertdatingsuccess.com that is all based on my personal experience as a guy in the dating space. So any, any advice that I give you is going to be from a guy's perspective and stuff that's actually worked as a guy. Women aren't going to always be the greatest source to go to because because it's kind of like they're studying up on men so they have an idea of what they think should work, but they haven't actually gone through the experience it. So a lot of things on the list I saw was like, oh, was well, a woman, I don't think I would like this. And I can tell you as a guy, some of these things I've done and actually attracted more women. But you would know that from this source. So whether it's my materials or other you know, guys out there that are giving dating advice. And even with that, you got to be mindful that some of those guys are giving their dating advice in a space where they're giving the advice that's going to hopefully be pleasing to females if they come across it. I give a crap not. I don't care if women like this or not. I'm giving you the straight facts based on my experience, which is that some of the stuff on this list is pure bull crap and you need to be aware of it. All right. So if you want to do better in your dating life and you're an introvert, or even if you're not, you can go to introvertdatingsuccess.com, check out my ebooks, check out my audiobooks, check out my video courses, and you can also check out uh, the freebies that I have there. I also offer one on one coaching. And of course, if any of this stuff is helpful to you, you can always leave a, a donation to support this work and the show because I'm ultimately all about helping you figure out the things that are truly going to make you stand out as a man and not giving you fake lists like this that'll confuse you. If you found the info in this episode to be helpful, please show your support by clicking on the tip jar tab, the link of which can be found at the website and in the description below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment on this episode and catch new episodes right here on YouTube or wherever podcasts can be found. In the meantime, be sure to check out these other episodes so you too can learn to date your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.